the temple of God? Well, the devil cannot come into the temple. Hello. So well, we've seen some bad things. I know, but we're talking about the spiritual temple of God. And if you dwell in the authority that God has given to you, like Scott out there, Captain Scott, manner out there directing traffic, running the parade, he's going to be doing this, uh, he's going to have other people working for him, organize and run this parade, everybody do what you're supposed to do. Because I have authority to tell you what to do. So, God has given us authority. That's one word that's translated power. But there is another word translated power. And that's found in uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And they were asking Jesus, these Isra Israeli people were asking Jesus, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And obviously 2,000 years have passed and he hasn't restored it to Israel. He said, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own hand. But, I got a good deal for you. You shall receive power after. You shall receive power after. after. People want power before. But this is after. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now you can receive the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost may not have come upon you. Where do you receive the Holy Ghost? Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This fake of the Spirit. That they which receive Him should receive. They that believe on Him should receive. People that believe on Jesus should receive the Holy Spirit. Hello. He breathed on the disciples and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Receive. You can't grab it from God. Give it up. I want that Holy Spirit. <laughs> no, you have to receive. Receive. What do you do when somebody offers you something? Oh, let me pay for it. No, you can't just give it to me. I don't want you to just give it to me. God is saying, no, I'm just giving. You can't pay for this. You don't have enough money. We're talking the Holy Spirit. He's making a deal with us. <coughs> you give me your sins. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. If I say the world, the world. not just the church. Not just the Jews. Right. Not just the Germans. We have Helen and, and Mary. Is it Bible? Bible. Bible. And we're glad she's here today. Linda's here today. Taken care of, they disappeared from the scene. 
through the name of Jesus and by taking authority. So that's talking about three, three manifestations of revelation. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and wisdom is always about the future. Knowledge is about now or the past. And the discernment of spirits. Some people have actually seen into the spirit realm that is God manifest to them the operation of the devil. And also, if it's always about the devil, that might not be the discernment of spirits. Because in the realm of the spirit, there are angels. And I know people have seen angels in this place. They saw them dancing. Tracy, uh, Scott's sister, saw angels dancing in this place. And she described how they were dressed and how they were dancing and praising God. Um, so, discernment of spirit, revelation gifts. You shall receive power. When the power comes, it's actually a force. It's, a, it's really, it's not just authority, just saying, well, if you don't stop, I represent an authority larger than me, and it's going to kick your tail in the room. Amen? Amen? There's an authority that we have as the sons and daughters of God. Amen. I'm a son of God. How about you? Son or daughter of God. I'm a son of God. If I'm a son of God, then I have the authority through the Lord. If I obey His word, yeah. He'll back me up. I mean, I can't break the law and expect him to back me up. But as, as a son of God, I have authority. Now, the other word is dunamis, so revelation gifts. Then there are power gifts. And those are faith, the operation of the gift of faith. Um, the operation of the working of miracles. And the gifts of healing. The gifts of healing have not disappeared from the church. The church has disappeared from the gifts of healing. Yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. And, and, and one place is that you've left your first love. That's why if you are so in love, you just want to spend all this time in the presence of God. Right? People that fall in love, they want to be together. People that fall out of love, they don't really enjoy being together too much. Right? right? So he says, don't leave your first love. Well, how can I do that? He says, repent. you got to be in a state all the time. Somebody says, well, I repented 50 years ago. I repented this morning. Yeah. I mean, I'm always finding myself in a place of, he always is reminding me uh, of, you know, the fact that I am not perfect and and I need his forgiveness. I need his help. So yeah. anyway, there are these gifts, gifts of power. And when those power gifts are in operation, that's what happened at the Cape Cod Beautiful. There was a miracle took place because they were tuned in to the gifts of the Spirit. Now they passed this guy lots of times before and nothing happened. This <coughs> day, because they were tuned in, Peter just said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. What you have is no good unless you give it away. So he gave it away. And he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And this man was over 40 years in this condition, hadn't walked. Had never walked. Wow. So that is power. And that turned Jerusalem upside down because everybody saw this guy all the time going to the temple because the temple was the center of everything. So then, there are gifts of tongues, diverse tongues, and interpretation of tongues. So the gift of tongues, these are the vocal gifts. And, and the interpretation of tongues, and then one other is prophecy. And he said, you may all prophesy one by one. Hallelujah. So there, there are power when, when as we said, Jack, you got a good name. Powers. Powers. These aren't just flowers. They're power flowers. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so we have this power 
And it is actual, actual dynamic force that you can feel. And, and we're in the presence of the Lord even now. Hallelujah. So, before we do anything, Tom is going to come and sing to us in a minute here. Uh, you never know what's going to happen here. But uh, I'd like for us to stand. Hallelujah. And know that we are in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because, you know, God, as the Father, created everything, right? A long time ago. God took on flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father. But now the Lord is manifesting himself through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, he's here. Shall we just worship him one more time before we do anything else? Father, we come to you. Lord, <laughs> you said you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. We believe that. We know that you're here. If there's anyone today who needs to confess to you their sins, I pray they will do that in their heart even and speak to you about it and that their sins are forgiven. If there is anyone here, Lord, that is fighting demons of depression, feels like their life is a failure going nowhere, I pray that you will heal them. In Jesus' name. Lord, whatever physical healing needs to take place in our bodies today. I was glad when they said unto me that let us go to the house of the Lord. We sang that to you, Lord. And we sang it to each other. And when I, when my brother got in the car today, when Ken got in the car today, he said, oh, I was very listening to the scripture. I mean, 22nd Psalm, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your healing power to heal each and every one of us is it. I'm, I'm just unleashing that, Lord, just, just by faith. I, I don't know how to express it exactly, Lord, but, but release your gift of faith in our midst. Lord, release your healing power and virtue into our bodies, spirit, soul, mind, and body. Hallelujah. Let no one leave this place today without being ready for whatever comes next. Hallelujah. Praise you. Praise you. The days, years ago, mighty things happened. But this is a better day. This is the best day. This is the day we have made. We will rejoice in it. And be glad. Praise God. Amen. 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 All right. Hallelujah. Well, I didn't expect you to do all this stuff, but uh, come, come and sing. He's, you know, last time he sang, he sang for his mother. She loved his mother. So, so we're going to listen to what he's done. And let the Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
I'm, I'm believing the Lord for my healing. And, and so, if you would like to pray for me, I'll be seated. Sure. Brother sure. um, well, Ed, do you want to come and remind me? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Do you believe in healing? Praise God. It was all faith that it's impossible to please God, right? Right. And how do we get to faith? Mm -hmm. By hearing the word of God and by sharing your testimony, which is the word. Because he's given us these testimonies, right? Yeah. That builds our faith up. Amen. Amen. And anybody with any kind of faith who prays his prayer. Amen. Right? Absolutely. So we're going to believe. Praise God. And I'm going to receive it. I am receiving, but I'm going to receive it. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we thank you for our pastor, George White. And Father, we just bring him to you right now. He loves you. We know that. He dedicated his life to you. We did that today. That you would touch his body, heal his infirmities, and we Amen. cast him out right now. We bind you, whatever is afflicting yours right now, pain, whatever it is. We rebuke it and we cast Amen. it out in the name Amen. of Jesus. Yes. We ask the healing, Lord. We, we just allow the healing to flow into your own body to fill this area right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for praying for me. And I'm ready to run the race. I'm planning to run the race. I missed the race yesterday, Troy. I'm not going to miss the next one. Hallelujah. Um, uh, Brother Warren Petoskey is with us, and I feel like the Lord would let it, uh, have him to share with us some words from the book, uh, if you will. Um, and let's, let's receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, did we dismiss for class? I don't know. I, 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 I was going to every Every uh, thing I, I, I messed up. I Brother Petoskey is here. They have a ministry, Dawn Land, and uh, our church is supporting the ministry at this point in time. And while we're talking about that, I, one of the main things I need to tell you today is on Tuesday, you have to come to church on Tuesday. Have to come. We have a brother from Russia. Oh yeah. And uh, Vitaly um, Kiesel. and he and his family, um, their family was persecuted in Russia. And in 1912, they his his grandfather. Um, I think it was his grandfather. Um, could have been his great grandfather, but. Received the Lord in 1912 in, in Russia. And right after that, the Bolshevik Revolution took place. And communism, socialism, and then communism took over their form of government, which was anti God, of course. And so they had to go underground. They had to hide out, uh, go into the tundra, and, and be maybe in a forest or or in a secret place, they would meet, the Christians would meet, and worship the Lord silently there. Um, so I was wondering what happened to the family, because the man that went there was Andrew Bar David Urshan, mm -hmm. and he had written a book, Tongues of Fire, and I read the book and the, and the story of him going to Russia in 1912, preaching the gospel there. And when he, um, preached the gospel. He only spent two days there. But these people were converted to the Lord. 
And so the family, as I said, went underground. And then after the death of Stalin, I remember the day he died and was on the news. I was on the playground at school. And I thought, oh, the most evil man in the world died. Now the world would be a better place. But I didn't know another man would take his place. You know, that would be evil as well. But after Stalin died, um, well, and I must say, before Stalin died, their grandfather was sentenced to 30 years in prison for having a Bible. The devil doesn't want you to read this book. This is the one book that all Christians should read. All atheists should read. Everybody should read this book at least one time. And so he went to prison for 30 years. Well, he only spent three years in prison, only three years, for having a Bible in his position. You should treasure this. Right. Yeah. 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 So he was released from prison after Stalin died, and they, and you will hear their story from the Russian brother whose family was persecuted, and we've been supporting them uh, for a number of years now, but he was at the conference in Louisville, Kentucky last week, and uh, he had one day, he's in Indianapolis, Indiana. On, on Monday, he's going to be in Minnesota. And on Tuesday, he's going to come to you. And uh, the next day, he's flying out to Russia. So I, I would love for us to, even if it's inconvenient for you, uh, to make a sacrifice to come and, and uh, bless our brother. Because, uh, Seven o'clock we started, but our brother is uh, somebody very, very humble. But their church is doing dynamic things. They're ministering in the prisons, and the money that we give them, they've been buying Bibles and and taking them into the prisons. This is unheard of in in Russia, where the churches are allowed to just move in to the into the prison. But now they're open. Two prisons have been open to them, I believe. Do you think you did something to share? No. I just wanted to share about June the 6th. Okay. M Melissa Dudley has invited us that would want to come. Uh, she is going to be with us here on the 22nd of, of June. Uh, she has someone that's going to bring her out here. Uh, she still cannot drive. Uh, but she want, uh, in, has invited any of us who want to come. She's attended a little church in Farmington, and she is actually going to be leading a, a praise and worship, uh, a special evening of it. And so she invited us to come. So on June the 6th, if anybody's interested, just let me know. Yes. And so, also, I need to hear from different ones that are, are interested in the, the camping. Um, yeah, something dynamic is going to happen uh, with uh, Melissa. I, I'm going to do that. The Lord's going to touch her again. You know, last year, um, she received the Holy Ghost. She was at the coffee hour and received the Holy Ghost. Um, she was eating her food, and I said to her, you know, I think the Lord wants to baptize you in the Holy Ghost right now. And she put her food down. I put mine down. And uh, I went out on the porch and I got Carol and I said, come in here because Melissa is receiving the Holy Ghost and she's going to speak in other tongues just like they did on the day of Pentecost. And, I, and she did. And that was on Pentecost Sunday that she received the Holy Spirit that way. Well, then on the Thursday night, we have a Bible class and she came to the Bible class and uh, she was... She wasn't ready to to be baptized in the sense of thinking about I'm coming to be baptized. But we talked about baptism and she said, I feel so urgent when you love it. Uh, I'm not gonna leave here tonight without being baptized in Jesus' name. So it was so wonderful. Well she's had some really big battles with her nurse. She was in a car accident and, and so she's 
healing from that, and she moved. Uh, she loved being here, but uh, anyway, the church that she's going to, I'm so happy because they recognize the Holy Spirit working on her life and asking her to do the worship. So she has a job to do. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Everybody that comes to this church should eventually leave, I suppose. <laughs> and go and do something great for the Lord. But I hope you know, I hope nobody leaves. <laughs> I'm going to show up. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 It's good to be with you. I look forward to this getting here today. We've had quite experience over the last couple of weeks or so, which uh, involved Albuquerque, New Mexico, Santa Fe, and Pecos, and down the El Paso, the Sierra, oldest daughter, grandchildren, her family, and then home, and had a few days home, and then head to Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky, by the chimney with that. I always say, you know, I probably said that over and over again every time I <coughs> uh, some experience in the church, but uh, uh, some may not know that about 10 years ago I got clipped by a semi walking on the highway. And uh, somebody said, well, why aren't you bridged? Well, because the police officers were outside their jurisdiction and the report wasn't admissible in court of law. So I had recourse that way other than to try to pay a lawyer fifteen thousand dollars to pursue this case, which I didn't have. But since that time, I've dealt with uh, rising back pain, and uh, I've been here at times. And you've seen that I had good help, and I would sit out and, and uh, even trying to get upstairs was a struggle. Uh, but I would, you know. I've been determined to come here, and I've been determined as much as I've been able to uh, be where I need to be, because I want to live for God, and I want God in my life, and I want to serve Him, and not only serve Him, but I want to be a real threat to the enemy. Amen. And uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I said something here last time. I said, "Tell Him I'm coming." I'm coming to knock down the bars and gates and rescue the prisoners as many as I can. Yes. Amen. We Amen. had church going to Louisville. We had church coming home <laughs> in the car. We just had a great time. Amen. Presence of the Lord, uh, word of knowledge. Uh, we were edified, educated. Uh, uh, enthralled. But during the service uh, on Friday afternoon, the minister said, as many of you as would be obedient, uh, name one thing that you want from God and write it on a piece of paper. So I said, I want healing for my back and my legs and my hips. I've had one hip replaced, and I'm supposed to get the other one replaced. And uh, there's never been in that 10 year period of time when I haven't been without pain. And my wife will tell you that there have been times at the house where I've just said, I don't know if I can take any more of this. So that's what I wrote on that slip of paper. And uh, in the evening service, uh, Bishop Suber got up, the speaker, and he said, uh, as many of you as were obedient to the Lord and wrote that down on a slip of paper. And I'm sure there were those people there that wished at that point they had written something on a piece of paper. He said, bring that piece of paper forward. And uh, of course, I had my cane, I'm trying to hobble out in the aisle, you know, get down through there. Everybody beat me, you know, pretty much. So I'm determined I'm gonna stand up there until I can get to him. And there were all kinds of people in front of me. There were people falling out. There was just all kinds of stuff going on. And 
presence of the Lord was powerful. And hands came on my shoulders and uh, said, I need to get you up here to Bishop Suber. You've seen Brother Keller. He's about almost a head taller than I am. He had his hands on my shoulders and he just started pushing me through the crowd. I'm, I'm stumbling and trying to get up through there. He said, I, the Lord told me I need to get you up to Bishop Suber right now. And Bishop Suber shared with me that he's three-fourths Indian. Indian. That's good. <laughs> Fits right in my wheelhouse, you know. It didn't change his qualifications. <laughs> but he said, uh, what, at the time that I'm getting ahead of myself, he said, wave those pieces of paper around and we're going to pray together. And he said, throw them on the floor. Put it under your feet. And you know, I thought there are things we need to put under our feet. You know? Yeah, they, they don't belong to us. We need to give those back to wherever they come from. And, uh, those perpetrators That's that right. perpetrated these things, That's give it back. Right. You know, it doesn't belong to you. Amen. And God doesn't want you caring. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so I, drove, I threw that piece of paper on the floor, lifted my hands, and I still got my cane, you know, my crutch. And uh, I got up there, and the man that was helping Bishop Suber reached out and took my cane and threw it over on the table. And, uh, when he put his hand on my head, it was like there was a shock of energy or power or whatever you want to call it that went in the top of my head and I scraped my tailbone. And uh, I danced and shouted and ran down the aisle and backed up the aisle and turned and went and danced and did all these things. And I was sharing with Debbie Cornelius a little bit ago. He said, you used to dance in powwows. And I said, yeah, and I'm going to dance in some again, too. I'm getting my regalia ready. And we've got powwow lined up this summer. But I've been without pain ever since. Oh, Thank glory you. to God. thinks I need to tell it all, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. This, if I don't say it, she will. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but uh, all the Lord was, what I feel like the Lord was doing was reminding me, and I, the, the whole Bible presentation before we came up here about the power, and I was thinking of the word dynamite. Does that come from dynamite? Yeah. Or dynamo. Yeah. I think we, we're all supposed to be kind of most. That's right. That's right. I think we are. And uh, I remember a story a pastor told. Um, he had a, a, a small church in Wichita, Kansas. And uh, it was a good church. People loved to worship God. But they weren't too active. Some had responsibilities that they took and others didn't. And he said, for everyone that's here, he said, I'm going to buy a copy of a Bible study, a home Bible study, and uh, I will get that for you if you will go out and teach Bible study. He said, find somebody to teach you to. Because we're supposed to go out and bring them in, is that right? We'll go out and bring them in. That's the way this is supposed to work. And there was a, a man in the church who was a paraplegic who wrote with a stylus with his mouth. He couldn't move his arms. And he had somebody helping him to keep wiping his mouth because he slobbered. He came forward. And he told the pastor he wanted to teach Bible study. And the pastor said, uh, I'm trying to, in my mind immediately, I'm looking at all of his frailty and uh, struggle, but I said, if he wants to, I'll get him a home Bible study to you. Every day, this fellow went down to the train station, and everybody that got off the train, he asked them if they would be interested in him 
teaching of a Bible study. And I guess he estimated he had probably a thousand people turning down. Probably looked at him, looked at the slobber running down his mouth, and the fact that he had to use his style as to type his message on a screen and how long it took. But there was one young couple, Hispanic couple, that said, I would like you to come and teach us. And so he went to their house, taught them this whole Bible study, and they gave their lives to the Lord. Wow. I'm sharing that, reminding myself that I have a responsibility to this lost generation. The Bible teaches us that this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. And his sole motivation was to reach the lost. He gave his life so that people could live and that they could enjoy an abundant life. And I was reading this scripture this morning. I, it came to mind as I was sitting there. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not. They spin not. And yet I, I say unto you that Solomon in all the glory, and all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. I look at this in teardrops, so I'm not seeing it good. And the Indians say wet eyes. Oh, this is uh, Luke 12, beginning with the 27th verse. Sorry, I didn't think about that. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast in the oven, how much more will he clothe you, or you little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. Neither be ye of doubtful mind. I'm, re I'm reiterating this. Neither be ye of doubtful mind. Yeah. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that you have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. I want to say something right here. In your I, uh, I have about 1,500 people on my friends list on Facebook. And, uh, I post things on there. And one of the battles that I had was that I worked as an advocate and activist for the tribal nations faced off state and federal governments and local governments and even our own tribal governments, addressing issues that I thought needed to be uh, presented. And, uh, I was out in Connecticut and uh, I met a man who didn't know me, who was a prophet, still is. And he walked up to me and he said, I see you favoring your back. And I told him about the semi striking me. He said, that's not all the reason your back is bothering you. He said, your back is bothering you because you've been carrying the weight of governments on your shoulders. He said, you've been lifting with your back and not your knees. In other words, I wasn't praying for that. Yeah. And I said, you're absolutely right. And I said, that's changing right now. One of the things that I realized out of that was that it's God's intention uh, to, to attempt to save everybody on the planet. It's his purpose to do that. I'm looking forward to this next Tuesday night. I'd love to hear about that in Russia. I'd love to hear about the work of God going on everywhere and the kingdom of God being promoted. But well, one of the things that happens to us when we we're baptized into the church, when we repented and were baptized into the church, is our citizenship changes. Change. Mm -hmm. We're no longer citizens in the world. Is that right? I heard Brother Steve say something about that earlier. Right. 
We're citizens of the kingdom. So in becoming citizens of the kingdom, our vision and of things about things change. Uh, we leave all of those arenas that's in the world and we have one arena that we work in and that is the, the work of the kingdom of God. And the more loyal that we are to that, the more effective we are in what God has called us to do. I believe churches are struggling today because they have a confusion between their loyalty to governments and their loyalty to the government that there will be no end. The truth of the matter is that God is going to establish that government in Jerusalem one of these days. And every knee is going to bow and every uh, tongue is going to confess Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And they're going to look toward Jerusalem. <clears throat> I believe that we're living in the last time. I believe that we're on the verge of seeing things unfold because as much as the church is being promoted and we saw what was going on down there, thousands and thousands of people being baptized in Africa and around the world. Thousands of people. One man was there to get baptized and he was going back because he was over all these churches. And he was going back and tell the people in his churches what had happened to him and what they needed to do. I forget how many pastors he said there were going to be 400, something like that, a tremendous number of pastors, 800, somewhere around in there. And then they were going to go back and tell their people. Because God is involved in promoting his truth, but also understand that the enemy knows his time is short and he's going to do everything that he can to try to stop this. That's right. And, and Brother George said something on the way down there that struck with me, and that is, it is the enemy's business to try to seduce the bride of Christ. That's, right. That's his That's business. Right. But if we have that power in us, he can't succeed. Amen. I heard, I visited with a friend of mine, a kid that I, well, he's not a kid anymore. Okay, sometimes I can tell you. But he was my neighbor. And he said, I want to know what you think about this business about tongues. And I said, let me tell you what happened to me. I was a boy 10 years of age in a vacant lot, never read the book, and never went to church. And I spoke in tongues in a vacant lot. And the next time I spoke in tongues when I was 24 years of age, down in Albion, Michigan, at the campgrounds. It happened to me before anybody ever had a chance to coerce me, so that validated it, and I was renewed at, uh, at 24 years of age. You know how critical that is in my life? It's a critical issue. I want to walk in that revelation, and I want to walk under the influence of that experience. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. What do you want? Amen. Yes. You can't serve God and them. I always said, somebody said, well, what do you think about that scripture where he said, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and render unto God the things that are God? I think he was being sarcastic. What doesn't belong to God? What doesn't belong to God? Everything. Amen. Everything. Amen. And the minute that somebody thinks, uh, like the rich man, that uh, his life is defined by his riches, it's gone. Sell all that you have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that fails not. Do you get that? A treasure in the heavens that fails not. Where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupts. Paraphrase by me. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. 
You know, I can sit down and visit with people, and I know other pastors and ministers that say this, and it isn't long before I can find out where your heart is. And I'm not one to arbitrate that, but what I am is one to encourage you to uh, immerse yourself in the church. Immerse yourself in the book. Uh, Brother Ken back here sent me some music. Thrilling. I listened, my wife will tell you I played that, I had the radio turned.